All right, so this is the mosaic version. You can tell because of all the stripes on the wrong side of my hooded cowl. It's upside down because that's how we add the cowl part onto the hood. And you can start at any point. I just picked a random spot to start as long as it's not where these join because that's the hard part to start with. So pick any other spot. The other hard spot is when you get here. It's been easy so far because I'm just picking up the loops at the bottom. And this was my envelope border and it's harder to see what loops we should pick up. And I know people will panic and go, well, I can't do that. And I just wanted to make this video to show you that you can. Um, I should have woven this end in first, but I'll do it after. It's okay. I will weave my ends in. Do you weave your ends in right away? <laughs> so basically I'm doing double crochets for my first joining the cowl to the hood part. And you can sort of see here, there's like this V and this V and this V and they're kind of wibbly wobbly. So these stitches here are going to be wibbly wobbly. That's my official diagnosis. They aren't going to be as smooth as this one. It just isn't possible here. So that's okay. As long as you can kind of see, okay, there's one row, two rows, three rows, four, five, six. I did seven. So if you did more or less, adjust how many stitches go in. If I did seven rows, I'm going to put seven stitches. So try to, you can put stitch markers first if you think you want to be more careful. I will just sort of make it up as I go. I find a place to make a double crochet and I'm going to count them. So I got one. So that was for this row, this row here. I'm going to try to do somewhere here-ish. Whoops. See, now this is, it is tricky. I promise you it'll be okay though. Two. Three. I know people really like patterns that are more specific. Four. But this is the best I can do. And there is little hairs on my wool because it's actually alpaca. Even though I found like little pieces of um, like hay in it. <laughs> so between my cats and the alpaca hay and hair, I've been picking stuff all off of it the whole time, but that's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like maybe I should have gone here. Okay, I'm gonna take it apart. Let's try again. Should have gone a little closer. So maybe yarn over because I'm doing double crochet. I'm going to go here instead. Let's see if that makes it look less gappy. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that does get me near the end. This part here at the top was where I joined the rows. So it's up to you if you think that that's too gappy, which I do, honestly. I'm going to put my eighth stitch. So there was seven rows here. I'm going to put an eighth stitch. This is knotted. It just needs to be woven in. I'm going to put it here at the end, but I'm also going to put it at the end of this one. That'll join them together nicely. So I need to have this joining stitch, which is kind of number eight on both sides. And then I'll have seven more stitches across here now. Now, one of the things that if you've read the pattern, you can see that I've also did a bit of a wishy-washy try it on before you sew anything together because just the way tension and yarn and everything works, you really want to make sure that you neat gauge before you start but if you haven't done that or if you think you've done that you still want to double check before you sew it together and then realize it won't fit over your head okay so definitely not only are you trying to make sure that this hole where you put your head in like you put your head in here and your face comes out here definitely make sure your head fits here but if you want to be able to pull this down over your head so that it's on your neck and you can put it back up and down you want to make sure that your head fits here too. So those are the two places that you need to double check. I know that's kind of a weird video. It's kind of a weird pattern. Maybe you're going to doubt my skills now because <laughs> it's such a weird thing, but honestly, that's how I crochet. That's the best I can do to make sure that you guys get a pattern that fits. So 
this was my little joining spot. Then this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is number seven. And that takes me to the side where now I can find actual stitches again. So this was kind of where it's joining up. I know it's kind of tight there, but that's where I would say the first actual stitch comes back. And then I'm just going under the loops. Because my foundation row, I did a, did I do a chainless foundation row? Um, foundation single crochet. So there's nice loops at the bottom to find. And they kind of twist a bit, but that's just how it is. There is these loop at the front and then there's also kind of a V there. So just be consistent and your project will look okay. It doesn't matter what I think is right and it doesn't matter what the person down the street thinks is right. When an average person looks at this, they're going to see, is it consistent? Does it look like it's been done on purpose? Does it fit? Are the colors nice? Does it look soft? And they're not going to look close enough to go, oh, she skipped a stitch in here, you know? <laughs> so my, my big advice is just relax and enjoy your process. And if you make something beautiful and warm in the process of enjoying yourself playing with the yarn, then that's just a bonus. So here we are. We're going to go all the way around. And when we reach the first stitch, we can join it. And then we're going to start doing front post double crochets and back post double crochets. And I know that those are not typically found in my patterns. So that is why the video is showing just a little extra. So here's the final stitch. Okay, so this is our final stitch. This one here, you can pull it quite tight um, and that'll be fine when you're working, but you need to loosen it up and make sure you know what you're going into now. So this kind of gap belongs to this pole. So this pole's gap is up here. Find your V and slip stitch it together. This isn't tied in yet, so we need to tighten him. I'll weave him in a minute. A front post double crochet and a back post double crochet. We're going to go two, 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 two all the way around. Then we're going to do two back post double crochets. That means you're going around from the back and it creates a texture when you have two and two and two on the front and the back. It's like a false ribbing. That's what you're making it look like. When you're doing the back posts, I find it is easy for your hook to get snagged here. There's a little piece of yarn that wants to be snagged. So be careful about that. We don't need to snag him. The front post seems to be easier for me. It doesn't tend to get snagged on anything. Just those back ones, they like to get caught. So we're gonna go two, two, bring it around the front, two, two stitches here. There we go. You can see how it's starting to make its back and forth. You can do as many rows as you'd like. I'm gonna go until my yarn runs out because I have no other use for this beautiful alpaca yarn except for this project, which means I wanna use it up on this project. And um, I would say a minimum of 10 rounds, but it's really up to you. Try it on, see how tall it is, that sort of thing. The yardage in my pattern, obviously you'd have to change if you're not doing it how I do it, but those are the options that are very easy for you to change and you can make it your own. You can think of my patterns as more like guidelines. <laughs> so here we go. On the next round, you're going to put front posts on the front posts and back posts on the back posts. So it's just going to increase. It's going to be like a row of front and a row of back. There we go. Here I am at the end of the first row and you can see that mine has worked out. So that I had two, 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 all the way around two, two. Depending on how you manage this, you might get an extra stitch because um, depends on how many rows you've done and whether you thought this was enough or you make a mistake somewhere. You get to the end and you go, oh no, I have too many. Err on the side of making it one stitch smaller. So if you had three down here, on your final stitch, I'm going to show you, pretend that this was um, 
three. <laughs> Pretend that this is three stitches. You could do, whether it's back or front, you come up, you do the first part of the double crochet, yarn over and go around the next one, and do the first part of the double crochet, then do the second part of the double crochet through both. And that will make it so that you have one stitch here. On your next round, you'll treat these as one stitch. And that will make it so that it looks like two, two, two all the way around, but technically that stitch there will be smaller. That's my only hack. I don't know if it really counts as a hack, but that's how I would do it. So when you get to the end of a round, now that we have two in the front and two in the back, you finish it off, just do a slip stitch at the top of that first stitch that you had made. And then these ones are front stitches. These ones are back over here. So on these front stitches, I'm just going to go around again. And I'm going to do that front post alternate double crochet where I'm just making it taller by going through those funny loops. That counts as one double crochet. The next double crochet will just be a normal double crochet, but using the front post instead of like those loops that you would normally go through.